black hole. On paper, it has basically accurate gravitational lensing, Doppler effect, accretion disk, and whatnot. But also, it looks ugly as hell. I was searching for a small side hustle in Upwork, and the project contains a link which leads to a Twitter page of a te technical artist, excuse me, a uh, tech art director of research and development at Gearbox Studio. And this is what his version looks like. Now the first thing that comes into my mind is, I had a lot of experience in volumetric. I had a lot of experience in volumetric rendering inside Unreal, but also I had no idea on how the accretion disk worked in both real life and in computer graphics. Then I stumbled upon the WebGL shader, and since the source code was available for free, and then I learned really amazing techniques from it, and now I'm going to share my knowledge with you guys. So here is the plan. We take a cube, use some map, and then we get a black hole. It's a pixel shader and I won't be explaining super simple stuff but I will try my best to explain what is going on and whenever I say homework, please do it. So we place a cube, which is just a regular everyday normal cube. We make its location at 000, 000 and then we scale it all the way to 100. Now we are inside the cube. But to confirm that, we will make a simple material and apply it to the cube. Make sure that the two-sided option is checked or right, everything set. Now first we make a plane inside the cube, then we make it like a ring, and then we apply some function to make it look like a black hole, and then we will focus on making it look good. So here's the basic code that I want you to write it down. Here we have three variables that are not declared, and we declare them inside Unreal. Also I'm using Notepad++ with HLSL language installed. Once everything done, make the end step value to 50 and you will see a 2D plane. Now you might be thinking, come on man we are not stupid, but trust me, this is what we want. Now let's go through line by line on what, on what is going on. So first we have position, which is pose. The idea is to get the position of the camera with respect to the object. The next one we have steps. It is the value of pi divided by number of steps. The idea is to increment the value of pi by this value such that at the end of the loop we have pi is equal to pi or negative pi in our case. Now normal and tangent vectors. This one is really important so pay attention. If we take a circle make with x axis and y axis and radius r as shown. So the position of any point on the circumference can be cal calculated by using these trigonometric relations. This is trigonometry 101 and take it as a homework on how it works. Now if the camera is placed as shown, then the x-axis become the normal vector and the y-axis become the tangent vector. Now the U is used to make sure that the black hole size does not change with distance from the camera, like any other object in 3D space. Now old pose is the variable that is used to save the location of the position of various iteration. Now let's focus on what the position actually is. Now this step is the fundamental of the black hole shader and I want you to pay special attention to this one. The idea is similar to the 2D circle. If the camera is placed as shown then the tangent vector will look something like this. With normal vector is the camera position vector normalized. Now let's see how it's done using math. Now let's first discuss what is the camera vector. It ranges from 1 to minus 1 for each 3 dimensions based on what direction it is facing. Here black line shows the value of x axis and the green for the y axis. Now let's see the camera vector in Unreal. Totally confusing right? Now focus on only the x-axis. Just to make sure if there is a negative value, we will use the apps function 
which makes the negative to the positive. Let's talk about the cross product. By definition, it gives a vector perpendicular to both A and B. Now let's see this in, in Unreal. If we take a cross product to XY of C pose and XY of the camera vector, we will get a blue vector representing the Z axis. But still, Z axis is not aligned properly to the Z axis. If we take a full cross product, since we are looking from the X axis, so we get Y and Z vector. But still, they are not aligned properly. To fix this, we need to take a cross product again. And this is exactly what we want. Now just take a look at what I'm doing. We basically are seeing the value of position at a specific iteration of the loop. Now let me explain what the hell position actually is. And this is our this is our sphere, each iteration of loop slices the sphere and in spherical coordinate and in spherical coordinates of position, plane is defined by angle it covers. So idea is with each iteration the angle increases till it reaches 360 degree or pi at the end. All this stuff is simple but now the 1000 IQ stuff comes into play. First we are greeted by an if statement with very confusing boolean condition. Now for each iteration the camera rays intersect the sliced plane as shown but the marked intersection is really important. The z value takes the transition from positive to negative. Yellow is the ray. So the idea is if we multiply the old and the new value of z, it is always going to be negative or less than zero. Now how do we get the value of x, y, z coordinates when the ray crosses the center plane? Again it's basic math, we add, the, we add a vector to the old position based on how high it is from the center plane or simply lobe, lobe between old position new position and the alpha would again be the ratio of ray height to, to old position. Note that the value of the ratio should always be positive so abs function is used. Now r is simply the length of the position vector on the 2d plane. Now if that is really what we think then using a simple if statement Making the, making the maximum radius to 100 and minimum radius to 50 will give us a ring something like this. I think too much info already in this part 1. In the next part we will complete the series with the geodesic differential equation and the fun part. Now I don't know in the next now I really don't know if the next part would be uploaded tomorrow, next week, next month. But if you learned something new, make sure to subscribe and see you.